Um, switching was uh, studied extensively in STAR-D um, it, at level two. Um, switch was to bupropion, sertraline, uh, venlafaxine, and cognitive therapy, and um, no significant differences between between any of those comparison groups. Maybe a little bit of a advantage for uh, uh, cognitive therapy and and effector, but but nothing approaching significance. At level three, the next step, um, the switch was to uh, nortriptyline and mirtazapine, uh, with a a, a healthy um, higher response to mirtazapine, but with the numbers at level three, this wasn't uh, <coughs> significant either. But maybe a little bit of evidence for mirtazapine. Um, so I, I'll just sort of summarize the, the for each of the potential switch agents, the, the um, highest level of evidence that, that exists to, to support it or refute it, and, and when possible, the number needed to treat. So. Um, the switch from an SSRI specifically to, specifically to an SNRI has been studied three times. Um, uh, all, all three of these looked at venlafaxine, and all three found, uh, found significant evidence of, of, a, uh, of an effect um, compared to staying with an SSRI. Um, the number needed to treat is seven, so, so um, this is pretty good evidence that, that Effexor is a good choice uh, for the switch. Uh, mirtazapine, um, there's been one relatively small study. There's been a lot, of, lot more work with um, switching from TCAs, but uh, one small study switching from an SSRI. Um, there's no significant difference, but uh, 38, I think 38% responded to mirtazapine, 28% to the comparator, which I think was Zoloft. Um, so there's a pretty strong trend in the direction, but, but didn't quite make significance. Um, bupropion has... Um, studied in STAR-D with equivocal or negative uh, evidence uh, for its efficacy. Um, there's been open label trials, um, some positive, some negative, no RCTs. Um, switching to, to tricyclics and MAOIs have been, um, well, there's a, a huge amount of literature showing their efficacy before SSRIs. Um, switching from SSRIs, there hasn't been much work done. Um, one small RCT was, uh, from uh, looking at TCAs was, was pretty negative. Um, it showed actually TCAs might be even less effective than we would have thought. Um, and MAOIs have not been studied. In, in STAR-D, you know, they didn't differentiate from, from their comparator. So um, these, are, these are admittedly subjective, but came up with some grading of the, of, of the switching options um, after failure of an initial SSRI and rated them on their effectiveness and tolerability and, and pointed out where it might be useful for special populations. So, um, you know, things like TCAs and MAOIs from the, from the previous, the evidence from the 70s and 80s, it's pretty clear that they'd be effective, but their tolerability profile is such that they're probably not good choices at this early stage in, the, um, in an algorithm. Um, they just have too many side effects and potential interactions. Um, sw after initial SSRI failure, switching to bupropion and SSRIs, or another SSRI, probably doesn't have the effectiveness that you'd like um, at this level of, of the algorithm. So um, in my view, you know, probably switching to an SNRI, specifically venlafaxine or mirtazapine, probably has the best combination of effectiveness and tolerability. Um, in, a, in a generic patient after a failure of an SSRI. So uh, if you don't switch, the other, the other choice is, is uh, augmentation. Um, this, is, this was the augmentation work done in STAR-D. Um, at level two, um, augmentation with bupropion, uh, buspirone, and cognitive therapy. Um, maybe, uh, again, no significant difference, nothing approaching significance there slightly less uh, effect for cognitive therapy. And then level three, the switch was to uh, lithium or T3. Um, and really, it's sort of an impressive uh, um, showing for, for T3. Uh, I think 24% of, uh, of patients responded, which is, which is remarkable for, for level three at STAR-D. Um, nothing else at level three was at that level. Um, Lithium was, I think, 15%. Again, no significant difference because there weren't that many subjects down then. And the, the, I think the average 
dose of lithium was in the 500, so a pretty low dose. Um, but again, nothing significant at all here. So looking at um, these agents um, individually, uh, there's been, for lithium and T3, um, a lot of evidence showing their efficacy in, as augmenting agents uh, to tricyclics. Um, I think for both, the NNT would be about uh, four to six, in the four to six range. There has been, as you'd expect, much less work uh, looking at them in, uh, as augmenting agents for SSRIs. Um, uh, for lithium, there was a really small study um, uh, that, that found an NNT of 2.2, which is probably or almost certainly a uh, inflated value, but uh, but it seems seems like it it, it has um, significant potential uh, for augmenting an SSRI. Uh, T3, two small studies that were uh, in the in the direction of a of a significant effect, but but uh, didn't uh, meet a meet the p-value was greater than 0.05, um, but but pretty strong evidence that they have augmenting potential um, for an SSRI. Uh, by far, the, the drugs that have been most studied um, as augmenting agents have been the, the atypical antipsychotics. Um, olanzapine um, studied f uh, probably uh, first, but only exclusively um, as an augmenter for fluoxetine. Um, and it looks from you know the, the four RCTs that have been done, looks clearly like there's an effect um, with an NNT of, of nine or ten. Um, but as, as we heard about yesterday with significant side effects, I um, think overall the average weight gain was, was 12 to 15 pounds. Um, the uh, average glucose went up uh, six or eight points, so, so pretty substantial effects. Um, the uh, quetiapine and aripiprazole also look like they, they have, um, clearly have an effect, and in that uh, NNT range of, of uh, you know, seven to nine, seven to 10. Um, and, and at least in, in these studies had significantly lower um, side, effect, uh, side effects and, and uh, less severe side effect profiles. So um, if, if you're choosing something from, from this class, probably uh, aripiprazole and quetiapine are, are, uh, are the best places to start. Uh, risperidone and zoprazidone have less evidence uh, supporting them in, in depression. Other augmenting agents, um, bupropion, no uh, no randomized controlled trials, um, equivocal evidence from, from STAR-D and open label trials. Um, mirtazapine, uh, some evidence from a small RCT that, that it's effective and, and with a good NNT of, of seven, so it's a, a reasonable choice. Uh, very small studies for modafinil um, that show an effect, but, but it's only been looked at in populations that were sort of enriched for fatigue symptoms. So it's unclear if, if all the effect is through treating the fatigue or if it's having an a independent effect on, on depression. Um, and Buspirone, um, two, two RCTs that were negative um, and no real evidence from uh, STAR-D or anywhere else to support it as an augmenting agent. So these are sort of our uh, grades for the, for the augmenters. Um, you know, probably looking at looking at this and, and prescribing patterns, I think T3 is probably underutilized um, as an augmenting agent. It's 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 pretty clearly effective and has a um, has some some side effects to consider, um, long-term side effects of bone density and things. But but it, it's probably underutilized. Um, lithium, if it's used correctly, is probably effective. But it's unclear if you know in general practice it can be used effectively. Um, the atypicals are, are probably the, the class with the most evidence for efficacy. There's been a lot of trials and a lot of positive trials, but they have significant tolerability issues. Um, uh, and mirtazapine is another reasonable, reasonable choice. Um, probably, in, in my view, looking at the evidence, um, bupropion is, is overused as an augmenting agent. Um, it's, it's you know, got advantages and it's attractive because of its um, side, effect, side effect profile is, is uh, often complementary to the SSRI, but, um, but I think because of that, it, it's, it's probably overused. Um, so this is a, a figure we've come up with essentially um, 
uh, trying to visualize all the options available for, for treating depression and, and treatment refractory depression. Um, starting at the top with, with the most benign interventions um, and working, working your way down to more, um, a, as patients become more refractory, uh, getting more and more invasive uh, interventions that have, um, have more side effects but, but probably are more likely to work. Um, and then sort of ending, ending up with, with interventions like ECT and, um, and um, at the end, you know, deep brain stimulation that, that really are only there for, for the most refractory patients. Um, so just sort of um, a little bit of extra stuff. Um, there, there's, there's been some movement away in, in, um, from companies from, from developing new antidepressants. There's a couple of areas that are you know, potentially promising. Um, this is some work from looking at ketamine, a glutamatergic agent. Um, uh, you know, getting it IV, it, it, the, the patients are in, uh, oops, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, these are the patients, and it, there's clearly uh, an acute, you know, uh, antidepressant effect um, within, you know, within an hour that, that kicks in, uh, but uh, it goes away within a week. Um, it's been, this has been shown four or five times, uh, but, but there's, there hasn't, we haven't figured out how to extend that antidepressant effect beyond the acute period, um, beyond a week, and, and you can't give repeated doses of ketamine. Um, uh, but there's some promise here, and especially uh, there's very, very little work we have so far with agents that show an acute antidepressant effect, so it's promising. Um, uh, we graded, um, this is a, a paper with Jerry Santacore at Yale. We, we listed sort of the, the systems that we think are the most likely um, to have uh, breakthroughs in, in antidepressants in the next you know, uh, 10, 20 years. Um, you know, some like, uh, like uh, triple reuptake inhibitors are, are essentially here, but um, uh, but but they're unlikely to to have a huge uh, impact on on the efficacy of our treatments. Um, others like uh, you know, things in the neurotrophic system, like BDNF, VEGF, um, are really promising. Have a lot of preclinical work supporting them, but but there's been pretty major hurdles in in getting them into into compounds that work in humans. Um, so probably, in my view, the two systems that are uh, most promising are the, the glutamate system and then um, HPA axis agents, uh, the best combination of, of likelihood of getting in, into the market in the next 10, 15 years and, um, and strong uh, clinical and preclinical evidence that they'll be uh, involved in depression. But nothing, nothing here now that's, that's useful now, but maybe you know, at this meeting 10 years from now, there'll be some drugs from these, these classes uh, available. Um, so just to sum up uh, the presentation, um, I guess first I think there's, there's, there are real differences between the initial choices for, uh, for an antidepressant. Um, that's something to consider and there are some, um, uh, some factors, some optimizing that can be done with, with the initial choice and, and augmenting with, uh, with treatments that, that don't have side effects but can have small but real, real benefits. Um, if, there's, if there's still not an adequate response, um, it makes sense to augment when you have a partial response, which with no response or intolerable side effects. I think, it's, as I mentioned, it's important to try to raise the, the possibility of ECT early. Um, it's you know, uh, the best treatment for depression that we have, and, and there's evidence that, that the, longer, the longer you wait, the more refractory uh, the, the depression gets and the less effective ECT will be. So, if we could do that a little bit earlier, we'd probably help um, help patients. Um, and it's helpful just throughout the course of treating uh, depression to consider um, non-medications um, and the utility of non-medications, um, you know, psychotherapy and supplements early and, and things like ECT uh, later on.